Cancer is a disease marked by the uncontrolled proliferation of abnormal cells within the body. While cancer can impact a variety of different tissues and cell types within different patients in different ways, even within the context of an individual tumor within an individual patient, subpopulations of cancer cells may exhibit distinct genetic alterations, transcriptional states, and spatial organization, and more. This is called intratumoral heterogeneity. Intratumoral heterogeneity is an important clinical determinant of patient outcomes. Different subpopulations of cancer cells may differentially interact with cells in the tumor microenvironment, as well as with therapies to drive resistance and relapse. Scientists, including those in my research team and others, are using the latest, most cutting-edge molecular profiling technologies, such as single-cell DNA and RNA sequencing, as well as developing new computational methods and statistical approaches for analyzing this type of data in order to characterize this heterogeneity and delineate the mechanisms by which this heterogeneity may play a role in driving cancer pathogenesis and prognosis. In order to better understand how genetically distinct subclones may differentially shape therapeutic resistance, interact with cells within the tumor microenvironment, and impact clinical outcomes, we need to be able to assess how these different subclones may differ transcriptionally. That is, we need to be able to simultaneously profile genetic and transcriptomic features from the same single cells, from the same tumor, from the same individuals. In order to achieve such simultaneous genetic and transcriptomic profiling in the same single cells, we can either take a technology development approach where we develop new technologies that allow us to measure both genetic and transcriptomic information from the same single cells, or we can take a computational approach where we develop new computational methods that allow us to connect genetic and transcriptomic information from individual cells using existing data. Today, I will focus on briefly discussing the computational approach, but you can always check out either of these papers below in the description for more detailed information. As detailed in our paper, linking transcriptional and genetic tumor heterogeneity through allele analysis of single-cell RNA sequencing data published in Genome Research in 2018, we developed a computational method called Honey Badger to infer some genetic information directly from single-cell RNA sequencing data. The general intuition that motivated our computational methods development is the idea that we can infer some genetic information directly from single-cell RNA sequencing data. Notably, single-cell RNA sequencing data is comprised of sequencing reads from expressed genes that may harbor mutations. So in theory, if a mutation is present within the exon of an expressed gene, we should be able to detect the mutation and use these mutation patterns to distinguish genetically distinct cancer subclones. However, in practice, sparse coverage and high monolulic detection limits our ability to confidently infer somatic point mutations from single-cell RNA sequencing data. Compared to bulk RNA-seq, single-cell RNA-seq has much poorer sensitivity for detecting single nucleotide variants, such as single nucleotide polymorphisms, that we know to be present. Even for highly expressed genes, monolulic detection, by which only one allele is sequenced, further limits our ability to confidently call heterozygous mutations, which may be present on the non-detected allele. And finally, we simply may not have coverage at all the genomic positions of interest, and in such a case, we would not be able to say whether this cell does or does not have a particular mutation, simply because there is no coverage at that point. In addition to somatic point mutations, cancer cells may harbor genomically larger aberrations such as copy number variations, or CNVs. In CNVs, chromosomal regions, arms, or even whole chromosomes may be lost or gained. We reason that patterns of heterozygous single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, present throughout the genome may be used to reveal evidence of such copy number variations in individual cells that could be used to distinguish different genetic subclones. Specifically, even though individual SNPs may be impacted by the sparse coverage and high monolithic detection as noted previously, joint analysis of multiple SNPs, such as those within regions affected by CMVs, could allow us to confidently achieve subclonal classification. Notably, in bulk RNA sequencing, 
When we look at the allelic frequencies of heterozygous single nucleotide polymorphisms within copy neutral diploid regions, we expectedly see a balanced detection of both alleles, as noted in yellow. However, in a region affected by CMV, such as a deletion, we only detect expression from one allele, as noted in blue, because the other allele was well deleted. When we profile the allelic frequencies of the same heterozygous SNPs in a population of single cells, the data is understandably a little bit noisier. We can see how SNPs within certain genes exhibit monoallelic detection of one allele, noted in blue, or the other allele, noted in red, and sometimes we can detect both alleles. However, when we look across a large region spanning multiple genes in a diploid copy neutral region, we can see detection of both alleles. Whereas in a region affected by deletion, we see persistent detection from the one remaining allele. To systematically identify and evaluate the probability of CMVs in individual cells from such SNP patterns and single cell RNA sequencing data, we applied a hidden Markov model to identify putative regions affected by CMVs and then applied a Bayesian hierarchical model that takes into consideration the sparse coverage and monolithic detection rates in order to infer the probability of each CNV within each single cell. And we packaged these statistical approaches into an open sourced R software package called Honey Badger, available on GitHub with additional tutorials and resources available on the accompanying software website. In order to demonstrate the utility of Honey Badger, we first applied it to distinguish cancer cells harboring CNVs from normal diploid cells in a patient with multiple myeloma. Indeed, Honey Badger was able to identify a number of regions affected by potential CNVs and further infer the posterior probability of each cell harboring each CNV based on the observed SNP patterns. Hierarchical clustering of the resulting posterior probabilities correctly distinguish the cancer cells, which have high probabilities of harboring the identified CNVs, from the normal cells, which have very low probabilities of harboring the identified CNVs, consistent with what we expect. We further validated the identified CNVs by Honey Badger using whole exome sequencing, where indeed we confirmed that deletion affected many whole chromosomes, as well as by molecular cytogenetics, where we can see here one dot corresponding to the one copy of NMAF on chromosome 16, which is affected by deletion, versus two dots on the two copies of IGH on diploid chromosome 14 as a control. Having demonstrated that Honey Badger is able to distinguish cancer cells from normal cells based on identified CNVs, we then applied it to analyze multiple myeloma samples collected at two distinct time points from a progressive treatment refractory multiple myeloma patient. The initial multiple myeloma sample, MM34, was collected from the bone marrow at the time of diagnosis, while the second extramedullary multiple myeloma sample, MM34A, was collected from an ascites dissemination following two months of unsuccessful treatment. Applying honey badger to cells from the second ascites dissemination sample, MM34A, we were able to identify a number of clonal copy number variations that affected all cells with a high probability. Interestingly, when we sought to identify these same CNVs in cells from this first bone marrow sample, MM34, while we find that nearly all cells harbored chromosome 13 deletions, for example, only a fraction harbored the chromosome 16 and chromosome 17 deletions, indicative of a linear subclonal expansion where a genetic subclone harboring deletions on chromosome 13, 16, and 17 most likely expanded to see the extramedullary multiple myeloma dissemination, acquiring additional alterations during this process. We therefore designated this genetic subclone that was most genetically similar to the extramedullary multiple myeloma cells as the extramedullary-like multiple myeloma cells. While we were able to identify key genetic subclones based on distinct patterns of copy number variations, by inferring genetic information directly from single cell RNA sequencing data, we could then further characterize the transcriptional differences between these different subclones. 
In particular, we were able to identify over 100 consistently differentially downregulated and also upregulated genes when comparing the extramedullary-like subclone with other multiple myeloma cells in MM34, as well as jointly with the extramedullary multiple myeloma cells in MM34A. Beyond identifying specific differentially expressed genes, we can also characterize what pathways and gene sets are impacted by these differentially expressed genes. Gene set enrichment analysis found that genes upregulated in the extramedullary-like subclone showed significant enrichment in known multiple myeloma partial response signatures, as well as other cell cycle and proliferation-related signatures. In contrast, genes upregulated in the other genetic subclone showed significant enrichment in immune system processes, revealing how these different genetic subclones may exhibit distinct transcriptional signatures that ultimately contribute to cancer progression. Alternatively, we can first characterize aspects of transcriptional heterogeneity among our populations of multiple myeloma cells using methods such as pathway and gene set overdispersion analysis, or PAGODA. And we can then overlay the previously identified genetic information to assess the correspondence between the identified transcriptionally distinct subpopulations with the underlying genetic subclonal architecture. Indeed, we can identify aspects of transcriptional heterogeneity, such as this immune response aspect, that is well aligned with the underlying genetic subclonal architecture. Alternatively, we can also identify other aspects of transcriptional heterogeneity, such as this aspect driven by the expression of chemokine ligands CCL3 and CCL4, that do not appear to correlate with any of the identified genetic subclonal architecture, potentially indicative of other alternative non-genetic drivers of transcriptional heterogeneity such as the composition of the tumor microenvironment and more. So I hope we've been able to show you how by inferring genetic subclonal architecture directly from single cell RNA sequencing data, computational methods such as Honey Badger can help us better understand the interplay between transcriptional and genetic heterogeneity in cancer progression. And with that, thank you to everyone who has contributed to this research in particular our collaborators, as well as the funding agencies that made this research possible. And thank you for your attention.